Ladies and gentlemen, I am Randhika Marsuriya from Mechanical Engineering and Sectional Committee. It's my great pleasure to see all of you gathered here for the public lecture on the art of problem solving in manufacturing and service industries with Lin Six Sigma, jointly organized by IMEC Sri Lanka Group and Mechanical Engineering and Sectional Committee of Institute of, of Engineers Sri Lanka. Today our resource person is Engineer Divakaran Mahalingam. He is a chartered mechanical engineer and certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt in profession. He has completed his Masters in Industrial Automation from University of Morocco and BSc in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering from University of Rohuna. Currently reading an MBA at London Metropolitan University. He has 10 years of industrial experience in multinational manufacturing based companies with sheet, sheet metal and workshop process, electronic component manufacturing and food processing. He has worked on many top down and bottom up projects. In order to welcome all of you on behalf of IMAKI Sri Lanka group, I would like to uh, cordially invite engineer Chanaka Banyarachi, chairman of IMAKI Sri Lanka group as well as supply chain, supply chain director of Glaxo Smith Line. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening all. Uh, I am happy to be here uh, to, to introduce Diva and to welcome you for this uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, we have heard a lot about Lean and I think we have heard a lot about uh, Six Sigma and then uh, Kaizen's uh, and RCA's all these things are maybe familiar worlds for most of you. But uh, I am not sure how much we are using these uh, systems for business benefit, maybe as engineers, as entrepreneurs or as business leaders, the amount we uh, use these tools for our benefit. I see it very, uh, very, in fact, very low and end of the day, you don't see business benefits uh, coming out of this uh, Lean or Six Sigma. So that is one of the cases which we have seen over time. Though you have a, a department running Six Sigma or Lean, but you really don't get the business benefit coming to the uh, system. So, I think uh, what Diva is going to do now is just to take us through some of the problems and issues we encounter when we try to uh, develop Lean uh, or Six Sigma into the system and then how we really tackle this problem and end of the day how we reap benefits out of the system. Otherwise, uh, in normal world what happened was we have Lean somewhere there or Six Sigma somewhere there. We all try to ensure that we run our systems in this way. But end of the day, the real benefit is not derived to the business or to the population. So that is one of the areas uh, we were discussing at length and some they have cracked this, some they know how to apply this really and to get business benefit immediately. Right? So I think that is the area where we also need to think how best we can achieve Lean or Six Sigma and then how best we can uh, drive business benefits to it. It can be maybe efficiency. Uh, it can be maybe reducing waste or it can be maybe financial benefits coming to the system. I think uh, without further ado, let me invite uh, engineer Thirakaran Mahalingam for the presentation. The podium is over to you. A round of applause. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I Bhuvan and Varaka. Uh, so today as uh, you all got uh, the introduction from my good friend Randika about this uh, and my background and uh, what I have uh, 
had experiences on this uh, top down and bottom up projects and how we create the values in the businesses uh, while using these lean six sigma tools so i'm going to talk about today about this problem solving so i took this manufacturing and service industry both in my both hands because as you all know we are having both kind of industries and you you, you guys know as being professionals how we are performing as a whole country in this uh, all country so this art of problem solving of course we need in the entire life of course, as individuals also as groups and business leaders in any level of professions and any kind of professions so coming one hour <coughs> so i'll try to finish up by 45 minutes just to keep you guys happy so do not want to spend more time so let us uh, be within this uh, house uh, having a kind of introduction about the topic what we are what i am going to discuss with you all and uh, actually the problem solving and uh, the value creation okay so that is the main thing what uh, uh, engineer chanaka vanyara she spoke to you all so how we are creating value on our business using these tools end of the day everybody wants a heavy wallet isn't it so next the developing competitive advantage so i will touch these topics a little bit just to give you guys a kind of insight so what is the significance of the tools so that we are going to use if you are in the game of lean six sigma in your business so then the value equation as you all know but i will link a bit on this value equation with our normal life and lean six sigma then again everybody has a you know kind of i would say kind of gray area what do you think like what is lean and what is six sigma and what will happen like if we combine together or merge together what is the benefit the business will get so everybody knows and everybody might read a lot about things and my our couple of big companies are using this lean practices very well having kind of brand name uh, so it is well known i think uh, i can use those names as well if you take the mas holdings they do have kind of uh, mas operating system called mos and gsk they do practice uh, gps called gsk production system so what it says is everybody using this or taking this philosophies and build their own system in order to perform well or take the maximum return of their asset what they put in on the business can be tangible or intangible so next i would like to you know share one of my out of box thinking that i have done for my masters uh, as a partial full fulfillment of my uh, masters uh, the thesis what i have done so i will discuss about these things so that is kind of where i have merged this statistical approach and the engineering simulations how we can make or shorten this decision making process in order to provide the product or service our customer so that will be a bit of interesting thing so it's a new way of thinking i got so many reviews so i will talk about couple of uh, areas on that particular study last so we should definitely talk about kind of barriers what we what we do have right now and what researchers found in entire world so how they have merged these things they might like millions of barriers in anything when we are going to do but how they have come up with certain barriers and what is the most highlighted barrier in their study for us to think if we are going to implement or if we are going to be in a game of lean six sigma okay ladies and gentlemen so as i told manufacturing industry manufacturing industry it's sorry yeah can you right yeah yeah okay so the manufacturing industry and the service industry so that's what we do have and i would say we do have the problems in our head let's imagine our legs as the path for us to find uh, solution and which is 
In my case, today I am going to talk about Lean Six Sigma. How it is going to be uh, help us towards the path of success, and the way how we are going to walk towards the success using Lean Six Sigma tools. So that is you all about that I am going to talk about to you guys uh, within a couple of uh, minutes. So let's clear up about this uh, problem solving issue. Okay, so day to day life also we are every day solving the problems. Okay, so it can be a Personal problem for an individual, or a problem for an ethnic group, or a problem for a company, or a problem for an entire country, or problem for the world. So, wherever the problem for whom or what, whatever it is, finding or the defining the exact problem is the main cause of the game. So, I think if I say so, you all are with me. Because Without knowing the exact problem, whatever you do, so how much millions you want to invest, what are the, the amount of dollar you are going to put on the uh, process, I don't think you will get a return. So define the problem exactly, it's going to solve half of way on our problem. I am not going to say so by my experience, because without knowing the exact problem, entire thing is going to be messed and we are going to giving a kind of unsatisfactory level to our top management. So, once we define the exact problem, we identify the exact problem, next stage is the exact root cause analysis. Okay? So, we need to dig out what is the thing, what, what makes the real problem, what, what is causing the problem real and exactly. Sometimes, we may come up with couple of steps and say, okay, this is the problem and okay, we all work together and solve this problem. But couple of days or couple of months, couple of years, the problem is going to appear, same again. So this study, we do not want to invent anything. People have practiced so many places, so many parts of the world and succeeded and they have shown their performances. So in that, such a way, for us to practice what they have used, what kind of tool they have used. Simply, everybody says root cause analysis is the best way to start or any uh, lean or six sigma projects or lean six sigma culture within our group or within our organization or any place of it. So, root cause analysis is one of the most important thing in lean six sigma journey. So, the matter is how we are going to inspire or introduce to this to our people. So, maybe we will have three different levels of uh, employees in our organization. So, if the top management only can find this exact root cause of it, okay, of course it can be a top down project and they can be. But how we are going to create the involvement of every employee in the game? So, that is the biggest challenge. So, that I will discuss on the coming slides. So, next we will see as the common rules. So, I think these, these two steps are the main. Think that we need to focus focus with more on uh, when we are talking about lean six sigma. So other things as engineers or any professions we do, we see multiple so solutions and we will select what is the best solution and implement it. But where we will fail again is control and sustain. So we are going to sustain the solution that we have implemented. So what is the control points that we are going to have within our system in order to sustain that solution? Okay. So, I talk about main three things in solving uh, problem solving. That is, we have the first thing, first and foremost, the important thing is we need to define the problem exactly. Second one is we need to find the exact root cause, what it is really or exactly making the uh, be the cause to create this problem. And other one is next part, everybody is perfect with that. We can find solution, we can do a couple of maps, we can use plenty of software and come up with a solution, but again, how we are going to sustain, how we are going to control the, uh, control the solution that we took apart. So, value creation, so Michael Porter in 1985 put it in a very nice way, in what kind of industry we do have, he has put it on a paper, in this way, the entire organization. Okay, so this is this is exactly showing. So you can imagine within your organization or any organization or whatever you feel, even a Gulag Parade from a multinational company, it can be in this way. Right? 
So we have inbound logistics, so we do have we need to have input materials and we should, uh, should have set up operations in our system and output and we are, we are delivering it and there should be certain people to uh, communicate to the customers, okay, then again how we are providing the service, whether it is product or service, okay. So I can feel how many of our maintenance engineers may now getting a service quotation from a firm, how quickly they are responsible. Okay, how quickly they are responding in order to take you guys a decision and deliver that decision to your top management in such scenarios. Okay, so there are always gaps within our within our system, within our entire life, within our day to day operations. We can find plenty of gaps always. So other supporting activities also there from infrastructure and human resource, technology development, especially R and D, how innovative they are, and the documents. But how this supply chain or the value chain is there and this is what Michael Porter says and we everybody we can accept it without anything and because business school uh, scientists everybody accept this thing also. So the main reason I am showing here is in this every cave or every box if you say in every indicating boxes there are room for us to think. There are that for us to uh, improve in order to make the margin and create the value in the business. Okay, so it is not only the production process only we are going to improve. Okay, so that is not only with the service that we are going to give to customer and that is that need to improve. So everywhere, so you can imagine like when you are creating a PO or when you are when you want to purchase a material for your uh, system. So you initially you need to uh, you know. Uh, material requisition and then they will put a PR and it is comes to a PO and it comes to a, a warehouse and they do a GI. So you can imagine what are the value added activities within this process. How long time it is kept aside? How long time kept on our CEO's table or the supply chain uh, manager's uh, table for a signature? So these all are adding uh, time in the sense every second in an organization is. Uh, you know, there are certain amount of money. Okay, so if we have the okay, so that is the basic function. So every delay is we are throwing certain amount of money from somewhere. Okay, so end of the day, that is the story. So developing a competitive advantage, as I said, it has to be very competitive, low cost, and differentiation. So that's who that's everyone accepting, okay. So we do not want to spend our entire wallet to get a you know a rubbish thing and keep it on our table and a couple of days we shouldn't feel bad on it, right? So everybody as a customer, myself or you all and anybody expert, you know, some person is valuable. So what are the benefits and what are for the amount that we spend on it? Okay. So in the business itself, uh, when we are creating a company to advantage, it's uh, you know completely the superior quality whether it is product or service, how much uh, quality that uh, you know business provides to the value customer. Then again the superior efficiency, okay, the cost management and how efficiency it is input to our uh, output. So how how uh, so what is the benefit of it and how, how efficiently the business is uh, giving the uh, outputs. So again this uh, before talking about the innovation, I would like to talk about this customer responsiveness. As I said, the quotation in a service form or else, uh, even it, it, it can be considered in organization in between uh, internal customers and uh, suppliers, of course. Okay, so we should be able to identify and appreciate other departments' difficulties. Of course, you know, as engineers, most of our guys may feel it is very, very difficult to work with the financial guys, okay, financial departments. If I say so, I think you all agree with me. But yeah, uh, you know, like there is a biggest point on it. If you see the resources are very, very scarce, right? So how we are going to utilize the resources is the most important thing. So as engineers or every other department, everybody wants to use the resources. So only the financial guy is going to stop it. Okay? So when the pull force is more, the resistance force, you know, is single, being a single guy, he has to uh, put the whole resistance on it to in order to make a return on the assets. Okay, so the main thing is the bar mean says lean six sigma all brand this all brand name says is okay you make the involvement of all people and you create the respect within the team 
and in such a way you build this company to advantage within your company to advantage in the value chain we are creating the value to the business and we are sustaining and the business performance so in that you know kind of fantastic way to the entire world and the valuable customer as well before going to the next slide is to feel the innovations so that is one of the biggest case in the lead six sigma or in the entire process even entire business we should have to be very innovative we can be product or processes it doesn't mean always within the production processes we need to do the innovations it can be within your uh, you know kind of administrative department or in the hr department okay so always we can be in the quality so likewise within the operation we can be in area so where is the gap if you identify the gap which matter of we go be so improving when we are if we are in the field of improvement then the matter of tools or the concepts or philosophies are helping us you know to reach that goal so last slide slide before we move to the lean six sigma exactly so now i think i talk about this organization what are businesses how we why we want to create uh, you know uh, real on assets and how we are going to sustain it so one is the complete game plan but being a you know individual customer okay so when i spend a money okay i need a quality of product if i buy so or if i go for a you know portable somewhere i need, i do expect a good service of this okay so that will be everybody expect so the value equation says always the base benefit and what is the cost that we are putting out so what is the amount i am putting out from the uh, wallet and what is i am getting that okay so this is nevertheless whether it is a premium product or premium service or a middle class or a low cost one whatever it is we would like to wear a device daily for a price that we uh, can buy a normal daily cost so that is the normal expectation of a uh, customer okay so what is happen when it is goes okay i am setting up product and i know set certain cost and i put a margin to run my business and i fix the price and i have to fix the price in the market price otherwise nobody wants to buy unless i don't have a you know a great brand image or kind of real business for the customer to have okay so the next year it is going up and the raw material prices may be changed and also how people want more money of course and the increment and bonuses everything what can business do okay so the next step easiest step is increase the price so what is so we are increase the margin of it and give it the price so what will happen so let's say a company or business a competitor a and b a is so much good on product innovations and process innovations and b is having a good image and everything okay so then they are because of their over cost or whatever the operational cost they have increased the price of the good okay so the customer of course still buy it because of the brand image or whatever it is so what about others so what is the percentage they are going to loss so what is the percentage of the customer they are going to lose in their coming years okay so this is the main task so what lean six sigma or any other tools so our aim plan is what we need to do we have to think in the other way okay so we are we are thinking in a modern way just taking off the traditional way we are not saying traditional ways are bad because the, there are companies they have ran for three four decades continuously and without without uh, using the system or anything but it doesn't mean like they have done it completely okay they would have done better than this if they think about this things okay so that is the reality so so that is the mindset okay so that is the attitude we should have like whatever we did okay up to now we have done okay we have succeeded but what is the way forward so what is the way forward what is the what is the strategy or what is the thinking or the direction we should have in order to make good performance in our business so as i said definitely the sales point to be drop so the modern way of thinking is what they are saying is always so we will make the profit from the sales price reducing the cost okay so how we are going to reduce the cost is it possible to reduce the raw material cost of course up to certain extent yes we can find some alternative material and uh, uh, you know we can use maybe we can cheaper materials if you want to really 
make a bad image on your product, but nobody wants to do it. So only the way people have found the all gurus have found we need to improve the processes for increase the efficiency. Okay. So these are stories and nice slogans. Every gurus they have ordered very nicely. We can read there are plenty of or millions of books about these things. Okay. So how we are going to reach this? Okay. So what is the exact game plan? What is the plan we are how we are going to use within our culture, within the within our selection contest, how we are going to use these techniques and how we can change the people's mindset and how, what is the level of change management that we are going to use in order to change the entire team. Okay. So this is the thing that I am uh, going to talk. I think I took more than 15 minutes to give you guys a kind of introduction about the business and all. Because without knowing this, we cannot fix or we cannot see the uh, inside of it or we cannot feel it. Why it is very important and why it is being six sigma to even the developed countries. Though I have to say in USA or Europe and wherever, even places in Japan, and everywhere they have used it. But we did it. None of these people are saying exactly what we have done. You guys uh, adapt and do it. So for my experience, so my perception, I would say, so we have to develop or we have to use these concepts and philosophies and we have to develop our own system because we are going to get the output from our people, our Sri Lanka people. So what is the game plan on it? Okay. So now we are in the exact slide. So the way that I will present you guys today is uh, I will talk about Lee. Then I will say uh, what is um, exactly Six Sigma is. Then we will see what is happening when the Lee Six Sigma concept comes and what is the uh, greatest achievement or what, what level we can uh, get from these uh, philosophies. Okay. So uh, there may be many guys. You know very about me and all, but I, when I prepare this presentation, I just put all the basic things because I want to give people a kind of insight, those who are not in touch with lean or six sigma. Okay? So, lean basically talks elimination of waste. Elimination of waste in a sense, we can say like a customer do not want to pay any cent which is not giving a value to this product or service. Okay, so I do not want to pay any amount of money for the non-value addition of my product. Okay, so that is the that is the simplest way of understanding this. But going with deeply, we talks about these three things mainly. So that is the base, and they have identified uh, or they yeah, identified kind of so many ways which can be in an organization or any any place. Then next one is. Uh, next two things are the most important. That is the unevenness and the overburden of the employees. Okay. So just imagine on a 30-year-old uh, organization, people are doing very well and they have done 30 years. Uh, the employee also like 50% like of employees work on the same organization for last 30 years. So then the overburden or the stress level, what they have. They were used to and they feel that is the way of doing it because they were, yes, they were doing the same job and it was succeeding and they get all the benefits and bonuses and salary increment, whatever it is. And even from the top management, if they are perfect in the, you know, some certain businesses can be in the good market, so they are also happy. So this unevenness and this overburden is the most terrible efficiency clears. Okay? Because of you know our people's attitude, we think we do the job, most of the people, not the other people, like you, all the people think, they think whatever job they are doing, they do or think like God. Okay? So they think like Christ. So whatever the difficulty they have, they were doing in such a way. But if we you know, if we think in a critical way, or if we model, or if we see there can be room for the changes, of course, it is very difficult going, it is going to be very, very difficult, the guy who was doing it for last 30 years. Okay? But as lean practitioners or change management agent, so this is the deal. Okay? 
So B has been in Sri Lanka and as we know how our Sri Lankan people think. So if we are if we want to make this change, so what is the strategy that we are going to use? So there is no any definition or any rule or we cannot put any model specifically for a Sri Lankan context. Okay, this is the way that we are going to do this. It is never going to happen. So it's time, place to place, or organization to organization. Maybe within the organization, department wise, they do have some different cultures. So this has to be very closely observed. Where it has to start, and what is the starting point, and what level of you know awareness to the people has to be. Okay. So leave, uh, if I put in a simple way, so this is the thing, and especially what it basically says is elimination of all work waste. If we go beyond it, it says it is not appreciating or encouraging any kind of non-value added activities. But researchers are saying, sorry, researchers are saying, if you see any product or any services, it is close to 90% of things are non-value added activities. Okay. So just imagine the gap, game or the area for improvement, how much we do have uh, to work. Okay. So. So this is a common thing everybody knows. So it basically talks about eight phase. So these are kind of insights for you all gentlemen. So ladies and gentlemen. So just uh, I want to give you a kind of thought where you can see in your organization what kind of ways it can be or it is there already in your organization. Okay. So it says uh, in effect of course we know we are saving this yield and uh, you know uh, how good we are doing and how much percentage scrap we are creating in our processes. These things are okay, yeah. So that's okay, we know defects. And over production, what it says, whether it is service or uh, you know product. Sometimes what the production managers or production guys do, whatever it is, okay, I don't want to what the anything, if the raw materials are there, okay, plan is there, I will do. In that case, if my colleague or the, my close friend in the supply chain department, he forget to order certain material. So, if maybe it's going to delay one week or two weeks, the raw material into the process. So, he never, it is very rare a production manager or production mentality person, he going to slow down his processes or slow down his production and manage. It is very rare. Not even in Sri Lanka, not even in the world. Okay. So his game is always making the numbers. So what is the risk that we are going to create there? Okay. So he has made a mistake or our system is incapable of ordering the material on time and we made a huge gap in our pro pro processes. And I can see in the meeting, okay, raw materials are not available, so I, I have finished my order, so I am waiting for two weeks. So it is always true, most of our processes are manual operated processes where we can invest a lot and where we do have a very common or standard product range, we can go for automation because it's high investment and automation is not always made of process as we are thinking. So when we take our experience of people, okay, two weeks uh, I don't have any work and my people are very happy and they are coming in the morning and sitting on the chairs and getting going and okay, two weeks after two weeks only materials comes and do you think we after these two weeks, once the material arrives, they will do the exact work on the exact way what they were doing? So that is not going to happen. Okay, so this is what I was saying. So how we are going to do the things? Over production, or we are going to produce more than customer wanted. So, customer wants to tell 10 quantity, we are producing 12 quantities, two, one, two quantity, of course, we cannot send it. So, two quantities we are keeping on. There are also somewhere, so again, we are creating an over inventory, inventory cost, and there is another base. So, if you, if you, you know, uh, look this entire organization with these thoughts, definitely while you are walking, means there is a walkthrough. When you do have a walkthrough, you will find plenty of ways that is killing your business money. So waiting like that and transportation, inventory, motion and extra processing of course, sometimes customer want like 100% quality and we may need sometimes 110% quality. So that's of course 
you know, there are situations like that. But we go seven ways till USA identified and recently only they have added these three ways. Only if you read some old books, it says seven ways. So this underutilization or non-utilized people's talent is the most, you know, destructive and that is the one of the, uh, I would say, uh, most destructive uh, ways in an organization. Because we should think in such a way, in an organization or in India, people who have, you know, plenty of degrees and plenty of masters and we cannot determine them as the, the most talented or the uh, good thinking people. Likewise, in the production floor people are, there may be people without models and errors and we cannot think they are the fully source. Okay. So, how we are going to take up these talents? So, what is the way that you are doing? Okay. So, you know, I have succeeded most of the projects. I would say, if you put an 820 rule, most of these, most Mostly these IDP projects are developed from the bottom of projects while talking to the operators. Okay? Because these are the people, let's say people, one guy is doing a pro process for 20 years. He may go from A to Z. Even he will not want to see the drawing itself. He knows the number. In the meantime, he knows where the difficulty is. Rather than the new guy going to talk. Of course, he, he may visualize the thing, where the difficulty is there, and he can visualize and bring up. But this relationship, or the communication between the flow level, the drawing and the, and the practitioner or whosoever, how we are going to take, it, take this up and create, who put this thing, put this talent on the value chain. So that is the biggest thing. You know, guys, this, most of these multinational companies, you know, they very rarely pay you on our degrees and all this stuff. And they think, what is our thinking pattern and how we can contribute this uh, value okay. So in such a way, not utilize people talent is being the biggest ways. So without ego and forget about the level of people and forget about the salary level, forget about which department he is, whether he is going to be attracted to you or not as being a manager, forget about all the things. If the guy is having a talent which is going to create a value in the value chain, Definitely taking it. So that's going to give a biggest confidence on us also as managers that how we are going to make the return on the resources that what we do have within the uh, game. So there are so many lean tools and techniques people are using. Okay, so root cause analysis is the bigger the. the for most important point for us to start this journey, as I told, and five years visual control. Visual control is one of the most important, and I believe in our Sri Lankan context, which is giving a good, uh, you know, uh, easy way of uh, make people awareness and uh, see the things. So I was talking to one of the gentlemen also before we start the lecture. So just imagine kind of uh, objective or others coming towards our eyes. Okay, so. Nobody wants to keep the eyes open and get fixed. Right? So let me be opposing. So if we make things visual, if we make things even factually, uh, you know, visible to everyone, so that's exactly it's going to help a lot to solve the problem itself. So we are taking out the problems rather than people may keep it in their mind and do on their own game. So it is not going to create a value of this. Okay. So the visual controls is the one of the easiest and uh, inspired and rewardable uh, tool that we can use very easily in the uh, lean concept uh, within our contest and I have experience a lot those. So likewise there are a lot of tools guys, definitely this error proofing, uh, we call uh, uh, properly okay, but uh, you know, I, I'm uh, sorry to say I'm not that much fan of using these all Japanese words. I want to maybe let's say if an organization is having more of these singular speaking people, we should translate this or put some special or funny name with singular and get use of it. Rather than we just uh, you know we're difficultly pronouncing this name and practice. Because that's why I'm always believing we should create an organization should create their own system in order to make their business uh, flourish.
So now we will talk about this uh, C sigma. Okay. So I said lean that will be eliminating the base. So what is going to do C sigma? Okay. So the main part of the C sigma, the main important contribution from C sigma concept or the philosophy is reducing the variations. Okay. So that is the main thing, nothing else does. There are different types of tools. Whatever you can do, individual moving range, chart or C chart, P chart, hypothesis, and lot of uh, you know uh, statistical tools, a lot of things are there. But just we are trying to reduce the variation of it. So nothing else. Okay. So of course, if you reduce the variation, our quality is going to be up. So just as shown in this bell curve. Okay. So the variation is there. So if we improve the process and try to get the variation very low. So whatever we do, like even though 100 pieces per hour, we are trying to make it 500 pieces, our process is very capable, which is having a high capability uh, in the process controlling. So definitely 500 pieces is going to be the good pieces. So 100, 500, 500 times more with no you know, defects or nothing there. So it's basically speaks 6 sigma, uh, you know, defect per million opportunities. So it's always says, uh, um, opportunities, right? So it says 3.4, so that is the level. So the yield wise, if we say it's almost 100%. So if you produce 100 part, okay, 100 part, it has to come. So if you produce like uh, million object opportunities, so opportunities is you know things like that, it is not exactly one thing. So if a product, how many times it, it can get wrong or it can be go wrong, so that is the opportunities. Okay, so it is not like one fully objective and we are producing like uh, 1 million of products and uh, making 3 points. So it's all about the opportunity. If you are going to write a check, okay, so how many places it can be go wrong? It's not like one of we are facing the check. Or we are, it is not for 1 million checks, uh, 3.4 million, uh, 3.4 checks can be, uh, can go wrong. So that is not the probability it talks. Okay. So I think, um, right, so the one of the most important thing I should emphasize is, uh, okay, where, when you can start this Six Sigma, okay, so when you can start Six Sigma, so that is the most important. So whatever the process is, whether it is giving a good product or bad product, it should be 100% bad or it should be 100% good. So in that sense, we say it's a stable process. Okay, so we are getting all pieces wrong. Okay, it's stable, it's still stable because it can be given only uh, defects, defect products. So if it is given other products, okay. so then there is a room we can we need to analyze what is the variation. So how we are going to reduce the variation. So what is the game plan? So that is the next part. So that is the place we can apply this six sigma concepts. So the variation thingy, so that's why I always say six sigma talking about always the variations, whether it is uh, what is the level and what is the deviation, it can be 0.5 millimeter or 0.1 millimeter or 0.1 gram or milligram, whatever it is. So that is the variation plus or minus we are always talking about. Okay. So it's always um, the three key areas which is saying process standardization and the other thing is the process stability, I said and the capability improvement. Okay. So standardization is one of the biggest uh, area that can be reduced variations. Okay. So though I am doing or uh, somebody else doing the process, if the process is well controlled, the variation is minimized. In such a way, so the variation feeling or the variation can be eliminated by standardizing the process. So what is the next step? So we have control it, we have tightened this, then it's a matter of getting the exact process, so now it is stable. So then how we can get this repeatability? So Sigma talks about more gauge R and R report, gauge repeatability and reproducibility. It can be go even for the visual also. So while we are inspecting something, how much time it can be repeatability and reproducibility. So in such a way we are improving the capability of a process. So in such a way, uh, we are killing the variations which is going to add to the process. 
So there are normally people, I just put these two slides just to give you guys to uh, an idea. Uh, people talk about this, we make and we may do uh, problem solving ways, Six Sigma, as we do have in E, uh, we call pick up, plan, do, and uh, check and uh, act. So like that is a whole structured way of thinking uh, to solve a problem. So that is the help of these all things, guys. So if, if you guys are well behind these all tools, and if you are seriously doing common sense to solve this issue, I should say forget about these all things and take you all way and keep the deal. Okay? But structure ways are always helping us to uh, succeed. So D make uh, and D make varieties, uh, why D make you will say, you know like D make is guys saying we define a problem and measure it and analyze and we do improvements on it and control it, as I said earlier. And what is demanding it says, well in certain cases we need to do a new design or the management has to completely do a restructuring of the entire organization. Okay, in order to make a profit or in order to increase the performance. In a sense, then we do we need to go for a new design. So that's saying another thing. Okay, so where we do have problems and we just want to do some kind of improvement and get rid of it, okay, we will stick with DMA. And we are going to do DMA and we do a new design and verify it and the problem solve and we, are, we do uh, we sustain it. So now it's uh, time to talk about this lead system. So what is doing this? It's simple, guys. So we do streamlining courses using the lean philosophies, then we do reduce the defects and improve the processes by reducing the variation. It effectively we are solving the problem. Okay, so by using the lean, we are just making everything clean up and everybody can see what is the problem going on and we are integrating the problem solving. So while we are going with the problem solving issues and what is the level of you know statistically how much or logically how much we can improve. Okay. So somebody can say, okay, so this is I have done it, so this continuous uh, improvement project of Heisen is uh, done this part and we have a return on that and that's it. So it, it may become a return on uh, profit and loss uh, on the predicted uh, profit and loss on the particular month or following month as well. But if you use the C Sigma techniques, and you may see most of these consultants, they will come and say, okay, you take the data and from this individual to range of P chart and C chart, depending on the sample size, how much sample we do have, okay, how much data, how, how, much, how many data we do have in order to uh, you know, analyze. Depending on the sample size, we have to use different charts, which is giving a more accurate interpretation. So that is the matter. Nothing, nothing else with this P O C or whatever chart is. It is a matter of just making accurate uh, interpretation from the available data. So Lean Six Sigma gives Lean accelerates the Six Sigma. Okay, so we are making everything clear and put these uh, techniques or statistical analysis and get the out of it and we are solving the issue and creating the value in our valuation. So this is one of the main area just for you guys to make a good insight on the Six Sigma, the special cost and the common cost variations, one of the most important thing. Okay. So special courses as shown in the graph, you can see. So it is kind of special and I would say it's controllable and uh, non-random. Okay. So it is inferior numbers, it costs because of special, maybe the operator didn't set the machine properly. Or even if we see uh, lead time of a process, the orders were not placing on time. Okay, they were the order came and the order placing uh, executive he or she kept that order for a couple of days on this table. Okay, so these things are eliminated. You know why most of now organizations are running with ERP, right? So this is the main advantage of using an ERP. How we can reduce or monitor these waste? People when they come on order, okay, how long time they get from their table? Okay, so it says, okay, the order is placed on this day, and given the ERP, these are wonderful software guys, they make the time research. So it says exactly this time, in this time, whether it is different zones or Africa or Europe, whatever it is, it says all stories. And if you put a one, press the one button and it says how much time has been wasted, just processing this order. Okay. So the next one is the common courses. 
because this special force and common forces is the main thing in order to go beyond from this uh, lean six sigma concepts, especially on the six sigma analysis, right? So common force, we say that is kind of thing we don't know exactly. So if you see, there are patterns and when we analyzing an individual moving rate right chart or something, and it will say how many how many data are out of our lower and upper limits. Okay, so then that patterns researchers are found. Okay, this is going to be a common force in our process. This is going to be a special force in our process. Then our you know approach is totally different. How we are going to solve this? Okay, so there are set of structured way to solve this. Uh, once we get get into the um, you know process, we are solving these uh, problems using this lean six sigma. So common process basically it is not matter of just hitting the machine. Okay, so that is entirely. If the machine is incapable of reducing it within the acceptable or required accuracy, so that is the management responsible. Again, it's going to uh, change the machine, or are we going to invest another bigger machine or accurate or very capable machine? So that is bigger. So that is out of control of the shock flow uh, improvements. Okay, so this is one of the main area that we should understand about this uh, special force and the common force things. So this is the study that I have done that, that I was talking to you. So we are almost uh, the last couple of minutes. So this approach, uh, it is uh, it is published in the IEEE Explorer. Okay. So this is uh, I done when I was uh, doing my uh, working in uh, electronic uh, inactive component manufacturing firm, a company called Lita. And uh, they do, you know, the inductor cell transformers. So that is their main business, inductor components. Some biggest customer, something like Samsung, Edison, and ADB. And it was, uh, uh, you know, they were using a lot of uh, fantastic technology, and especially these leads, Sigma tools, and all were uh, practiced, and they are getting the exact benefit, especially in this electronic industry. Of course, other people are also using, but nonetheless, even in the entire world, in electronic industry you know, because of their performances and their process capability and the level of expectation from their customers also in order to ensure the reliability from their products whatever it is okay so that is the main area where i go up with this uh, most of these tools and practice and uh, get the real benefit and how we contribute to the business while doing this analysis and all so this study especially on uh, based on inductors they are used with uh, eni cores so we have a problem of force operations. When it is subjected, because these low cost inductors are becoming very, very uh, particular with its compact size. That's how we are getting, because these are used in DC to DC converters and especially on the rectifiers. So that's how these laptops and the most of the electronic components are becoming, you know, the items are becoming very flat and slim. Okay, because the power supply, the power, the, the power supply unit. It has to become even the condenser and all in order to make other units very flat. Okay, so that that you know even now that business is very huge. So many competitors are there. It's a very booming business. So where we did have a problem with this uh, force operation. So my intention was every time when the designers are doing these designs, they were doing simulations and all kind of things in order to get the exact correct reliable product to the customer. So certain st stage when this business grew with this uh, new low cost inductor and this they were using flat conductors, so it is really very compact and quasi ratio. There are plenty of benefits of course, guys. It can be it can be for very very long hours. So when the demand comes up, we have the biggest or many problems from the customers' cost operation when they are sending these products to the big blocks. Okay, so this pick and place already comes for, okay, from these PCBs and these PCBs are sent through the micro oven. When it is subject to their thermal loads, because we, use, we don't use any clip for something just to minimize the cost, we just use the adhesives, uh, very capable adhesives to just uh, uh, you know get the adhesiveness, uh, get the bond between this P and I post. So this happened very largely and we get a lot of claims and things. And uh, our R&D guys, they were panic, and they used, you know, weeks and weeks to do these all simulations and trials. And eventually, we were losing the odds because customers do not want to have a, uh, you know, solution after three or four weeks after he gets into some recon. 
Okay, so initial pattern is within a short period. We have to give a kind of uh, idea or kind of uh, you know insight or or we should say at least it is poor. Okay, so otherwise it is pointless for them to wait with us. So I come up with this idea rather than doing these whole kind of simulations, we do a set of similar type of inductors. Do a statistical analysis and send through these all products uh, in the before hour and measure the before we send through the hour we measure the set of different type of inductors and measure the value and after the before hour also we measure the value and sometimes we reduce the gap because of the gap we force the uh, you know removing separation. Why this happening separation was was the the conductor and the depot was having less gap because we are trying to reduce the height right. So in that sense, the maximum we are what is possible we are trying to reduce. Okay. So in that case, okay, the product came okay, but when it is sent, sometimes the PCBs are not sent only once. It may send couple of times because of different temperature profile also, because of different components. Then they come to the phase. So I come up with an idea. Okay, using this no parameters. Let's say how much current volume is there, how much copper volume is there, and what is the amount of product. Enzymes we are using on the product, and these are the main parameters. And what is the exposed area? How big it is on surface level? When we when it is sent through the media, or what is the amount of thermal load it is absorbing? Using these parameters, I come up with a simple equation. Before going to any kind of simulation, these designers can use this simple calculation for their own answer and come up with an idea of okay, this product is going to work. So I can give you guys, okay, you want 15 millimeter high grade product and 20 to 25 millimeter with the uh, uh, footprint which you are giving in your PCB. Okay, I can do. So first insight I have given to the customer. Okay, I can do. Right. So then next is the matter. Now the thing, the customer also in the game for us to be the business. Okay. So this really helped them a lot, guys, and we have succeeded uh, many businesses. And uh, I published this uh, article um, in the IT Valley and I got so many reviews and uh, even uh, so many professors, they know like they say uh, this is a new way of doing. But before I thought or come up with this idea, I didn't find any kind of things like that and I was searching so many papers like that and I couldn't find any papers even in IT Valley or research paper wherever it is. So this is a new way of thinking. So why I want to show this or talk about this thing today itself, because this statistical tool, it can be linked very much close to our engineering simulations or engineering uh, designs or engineering decision making process in order to take or this product or service on a high, uh, very less time consuming uh, manner. Okay, you know this process of time to customer and time to market process. So in order to make the efficient in this process, that is doable in the statistical tool. Okay. So of course I should remember Dr. Uh, Chandima Patilina, uh, so he was the supervisor when I was doing this uh, research uh, study in the University of Morocco. So I should thank him uh, thank him also uh, at this uh, case. So last thing, but on least, we are going to wrap up in this slide uh, for questions, of course, guys. So this is the various uh, in interaction and implementation with the D Six Sigma concepts in other contexts. Or they have done it in so many contexts uh, in Iranian, in Poland, and UK, in so many places. And they have come up with this. They certain researchers, authors, they found that so many problems, so many values. But eventually they have all merged together and come up with this more four main areas. Top management support. Of course, guys, you know, like if the top management don't work, who else want it? Okay? If they are paying the salary and the bonuses and are all benefits are the employee, of course, we do not want it. So if if in an organization lack of top management support is support going to be there, and that is going to be a biggest barrier also. Okay? And the financial support, the financial capability. If, a, if we take so many SMEs, they are not, uh, you know, certain SMEs, they are not uh, capable of spending a lot of money for the consultants and all. Okay, guys. But at this place, I would like to say, um, if you are in game to introduce the link or use this link concept as a sigma concept in your business to create value 
I would say don't, uh, you know, laugh it in a very big way and think in a very big uh, scenario and don't make big scene in the organization. Make it very simple, try to create the environment of people and employ everybody and make the awareness what is going to be the benefit. And I would say, by the level of bonus, we can be, get more. If we are, if you all used to be, used to do this for being as a team and get into this. Okay, so that is the easiest way to do it. Simply start from this root cause analysis and problem solving techniques from the uh, low level employee team, but use it in your own um, other language, whatever it is. So that is going to give the most inspirational way of starting this Lean Six Sigma concept in our countries. Okay? So next is, as I said, skill knowledge and the change management. Sometimes we do have trade unions in the organization, how we are going to balance it. So you know guys, when the organization is running, people are like freeze, right? So they do not want to change anything. They come at 9 o'clock and want to go by the clock and they do their routine work. And it is very, very hard to go to find out the gap for you. Okay? So you need to unfreeze them and do the all changes and again do the freeze. Okay? Because you need to sustain it. Otherwise they will come back to the uh, previous stage. So how you are going to do? How you are going to handle this change transition? is one of the biggest challenge and biggest key area especially in our countries. Because we can make a lot of moves, a lot of new moves and how it comes to our countries. How we are going to change our people's attitude for the next in order to do these things. But the one of the biggest thing is the organizational culture that is going to be the biggest barrier for lean or whatever it is, you know, but I would like to in my advantage on today, on this day, on Lean Six Sigma implementation, how this organizational culture is going to be the barrier in our team. Okay? So, normally an organization culture should have a good team work attitude and you know it should have an appreciation of other people's difficulties. Okay? So it's not a matter of degrading or putting the other people down when they don't know something. So we know something because God gave us or we read somewhere, or we are fortunate to, you know, get that advantage. Just because of that, if somebody is not knowing that, putting them, you know, and not appreciating their difficulties is one of the biggest downgrade organizational culture, most of the places are having and playing this whole internal politics in this. Okay, so organizational culture or identifying the exact culture, how we are going to transform in the transformation of leadership within this Lead Six Sigma to be a Lead Six Sigma leader or practitioner is one of the key roles. And that is, most of our people are doesn't have, but it is something we need to build ourselves for, uh, build ourselves in order to go forward. Guys. So, <coughs> that's all. I think I took 10 minutes more. Uh, but I believe uh, I have given uh, adequate um, information and uh, I hope so, and uh, my uh, mail ID and uh, I mean Twitter also. So anything uh, uh, that you can share in the, after this lecture, or after this during the session, you can uh, of course uh, uh, contact me. And uh, the pictures that I have used, most of the pictures I post from the web and I use. I have uh, used. Uh, I have to uh, wherever I want, uh, where it's needed. The citations was there. And uh, if I missed any citations, uh, and none of these uh, pictures are all by me, so those all from the uh, website. And uh, so thanks a lot, and thanks a lot, of course, uh, uh, our IMP Sri Lanka group, and uh, of course, uh, uh, MESC, the uh, Anchor and the Sectional Committee, for giving me an opportunity. So, of course, guys, uh, we will, uh, it's open to you for uh, feedbacks and questions. You are have a small question. Yeah. He basically says how to improve the quality, productivity, in my understanding. And the uh, six sigma is focused to improve the quality. Improve the quality of the product. Yeah. Right? And traditionally, companies are 
quality production manager can put the quality and another person as a quality manager is a quality to input the quality. Yeah. Good people. Yeah. But what is your recovery? Uh, when we are going for the lead system, uh, charity control is for one person. Oh, what is the better? Yeah. So, uh, exactly. It's a wonderful question and it's kind of modern thought as well. And uh, yeah, lead talks about uh, rather than quantity, it uh, talks about the uh, elimination of waste. Okay, so elimination of waste, basically non valuable activities. So it is never talking about this, uh, you know, uh, quality or things like that. Of course, it talks about the productivity. Yeah, anyway, after eliminating the waste, the yeah. final results will be put in the quality. Yes, yeah, of course. It can be nature also. But it's a combination as well. For answering to your question, so now the having a quality control manager or quality control inspectors and the production manager that's really won't be adding within another coming couple of years. That's going to be completely managed. So even though now there are quality assurance managers and uh, compliance or so something like that. Because production guy has to ensure whatever he is producing it is within the company's accepted standard and quality. So quality assurance guy he will come and take random with our pieces and say, okay, I assume what my customer will get it with this quality product. So any problems come with no more quality mandate to write this corrective actions or root cause analysis in this MLCs or most of the well-reputed companies. It's not okay, what went wrong in the production systems? Okay. So quality controlling. So the lean C Sigma says first time quality has to be created. So that is one of the biggest objective of this. So if our operator is working, he should be able to check it. The first piece he has to uh, measure and ensure, okay, I am doing everything is perfect and he will be get no doubt or enter the system. So the system says Sunabar has started the sheet and he measured it and uh, everything is okay. So why it is going? Or an inspector in the ERP says, okay, in that particular time, that particular machine has produced this item, okay, I should go and do a random check. And he will do a random check on it. So if he found any non performities on that particular item, then he will report to the system itself. Okay, then it's a matter of the production team to create the corrective action and preventive actions if something goes or went wrong at that time. So that is the thing because uh, having two people and it's like a happy course, right? So that is the concept uh, production guys are having. Okay, I will produce okay 1000 items. If you can come and stop or if you can come and check. And always having this shopping and uh, you know always having fighting with this quality people. So why for it? So we are doing the job, right? So why do we want to fight each other in order to deliver a good, good or uh, best quality good for our value customer? So it's right. Okay, so we are using the uh, that process and the quality assessment manager, he can think of it certain ways and how we can improve the process in order to give a best quality product to the customer. So, in future, I believe most of the companies they don't want a uh, set of uh, overhead cost for controlling the cost. So, that is my perception. And I think most of the people are practicing.
Because when you are suggesting an idea or a new team, if everybody in the team says, okay, okay, boss, yes, exactly, fantastic idea, and what happens if something goes wrong? Okay, so I would suggest we should not put in all best players in the team and ask them to play. There should be a couple of guys who can make mentally absent on the opportunity most. So, likewise, guys, I would recommend we should have a kind of couple of negative minded people also. So, I always respect who, who you are the people within the organization because everybody comes to kind of earning for their monthly expenses. So, that is not for them individually itself. The marriage guy or family guy is for their family. So, the things are even in their you know, what do you call this behavior or in their characters. So it's how we are going to take him up and make the uh, team a success. So I only suggest the simple way, make these all people positive and negative attitude people together and build the team. But make the vision correct and keep the leader. And uh, one of the key thing is guys, when we are having these concepts, there should be so many teams, not only one leader, and we should make like, uh, you know, this famous order, I think, large offices, leaders at all the other sides. So this will give us, this is going to be boost like a rocket, you know, our journey will be very fast, and it will be long term. And also, we shouldn't think about the Lean Six Sigma or any, this kind of, this uh, philosophy is for a short term really. And if we think so, that itself says we fail. So okay, thank you guys. So it was a uh, thanks for the questions also. So we must take one more question. Yeah, of course. Uh, you are. My name is Arjuna Manapere. Uh, what kind of statistical tools you have by uh, they are using in Sri Lanka and manufacturing plant? What kind of statistical tools are being used? Yeah. Statistical tool mostly if I see uh, the SPC charts they use. Okay. So the next one is mostly in this manufacturing industry they use the capability analysis, the process capability. We call CDT. And if it is a machine, we call the CMT. So then uh, there is a set of you know, equations and all we use that we say if we take 15 pieces, that's good, 50 dimension, anything like that. Or if we take 100, that is recommended to get an accurate value. So we use the CPT and it has to be after we plot this well curve and all with this uh, lower limit, lower control limit and upper control limit, more than 1.33. Okay. So when it is uh, CNK for machine capability, we say it should be the index should be 1.5. Okay. So this these are the common tools uh, we have used uh, mostly. And of course uh, another thing is this uh, um, statistical. Yeah, statistics is uh, Statistica. Statistica. Statistica, yes, yes. Statistica is the other famous tool that we use. And this data is uh, mostly used in this uh, industry where we to measure all this, you know, the height or something like that. Uh, and um, especially in the electronic industry, we use to measure these uh, DCR values and indices. And in the sheet panel industries, let's say, uh, if they are using the Bernier caliper, how much you know, pressure they are putting. So it is like how repeatability and reproducibility. Okay. So normally when we pass a process, we do this uh, process capability is a must, and we draw some SPC chart how it is oscillating the variety, uh, the variation, variation within these all items, and the next thing is this gauge area, and it can be used for visual loops. So I would say looking at the camera, okay, this is pass, and I say pass, and another my colleague is say pass. Another one is safe So there is a you know controlling problem on this visual uh, area in our team. So for my experience, uh, that is the uh, statistic and uh, uh, these things and uh, SPC area in our team. Yeah, we can of course those are software data. Right? So like let's see between very simple couple of people. There are plenty of equations in the UG work, just a matter of putting on Excel and the password nobody can change it. So because we are very smart, right? So if my CEO says or uh, um, general manager says or my employee says the power analysis should be the same. So it's not of myself how I'm going to make the English. 
Uh, yes, of course, this parallel analysis is the next uh, the most important thing we use with the ATP. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is like uh, this thing. The, the capability analysis, what they do, so I will take, uh, let's say, one of your garments that you are doing. Uh, this is your measuring all okay? So when you're measuring all, you cut pieces and you do the measurement. Uh, definitely there are going to be a variation, whether it is cut by a robot or whatever it is. The quality of the robot or the performance of the robot is going to be made sure minimal variation. But definitely there are going to be variations. Okay? So when we measure it, so let's say your length is going to be 10 mm. Okay? And you are doing 0 0.5 mm plus or minus variation. Okay? So then what is happening? If you put a mean okay, there and 0 0.5 on plus, plus side and 0 0.5 on the minus side. Okay? So when you are okay that you measure 100 pieces and draw the graph and this is comes like this, where these two tails are just touching this 0 0.5 itself. Okay? So this is we cannot ensure there is very big possibility, there is a biggest possibility for us to go slightly 0 0.55 on both sides. Okay? So though we will have 0 0.5, we need to control on our process. So this is what customer work. 10 mm, 0 0.5 plus or minus. That is the uh, requirement from the customer. So we control our process just narrowing down to 0 0.4. And we do the analysis and it takes like more than 1.3 as the equation for the scalability analysis. That is the lower limit and upper limit, something like that. Ah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm asking. There, did you come up with a statistical model? So yeah. You found a correlation between the exactly. Two exactly. Yes. So there, uh, what I did was, um, so uh, we do the simulation first, and we find out the I uh, use NC software, and that NC software, again, I uh, model is uh, temperature profile, which is uh, uh, by standard IEC JREC standard. There is a standard for the surface mounted devices from the electronic industry. So that I model and use that one and I take that uh, you know results. Okay? So then I for to do that I need to do the mathematical modeling. So I did the mathematical modeling and similar in the analysis. Okay? So then I put these uh, things in the real practical scenario and uh, take these uh, differences and uh, draw these uh, normal distribution curves. Okay? So normal distribution curves shows how much the you know the shift it can be it is causing you the real the practical scenario the simulated uh, scenario and the practical scenario okay so that deviation gives us that's almost I did for six geometrical shape products it came up with 15 percent gap okay so it can be reduced further if I do some more models was really was to go with uh, different types of model you need to bring the raw materials from the supplier and different manufacturing tools. It's a bit of, you know, kind of little bit investment was there. So we did the provider in the investment that was able to do like six models. Then I found the normal distribution curve shift. Okay? So the inductors shift with the practical scenario and the real simulation scenario. So this shift I know is 15%, then using this uh, you know variant volume and this copper volume, I found this if the biggest Surface area of our product is having, what is the relationship having with this inductance drop? Whether it is uh, linear or uh, you know like inverse. It is having pro pro proportionate or inverse. Value. Likewise, adding the constant value, k, what we do normally when we see the correlations, uh, I add these all things like certain parameters, uh, variables come on the above the equation, certain comes from the below the equation. And uh, I validate this equation with this uh, another real scenario. Testing method. Testing method. So that part gives me 15% difference. Sir. Yeah, sure. It's called a testing hypothesis. Exactly, exactly. Testing hypothesis. So I test the null hypothesis like uh, this uh, doesn't have any kind of correlation between these uh, identified parameters. 
and it happens. But again, I come up with this uh, correlation. Fibers uh, say three percent variation is there, but of course it is useful. So still the fifteen percent gap is there. So some designers, if something to go wrong, fifteen percent is very good. So anyway, slightly here and there they are in the safe mode. So something to go wrong in a real scenario is the deviation should be more than fifteen percent. So that was the story. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, Siva uh, Karan Mahalingam, for that fantastic presentation. Uh, providing us a good insight on this tiny important topic. So, in order to present the token of token of appreciation for our presenter today, I would like to invite. Engineer Chula De Silva, past president of Institute of Engineers, Sri Lanka, to the stage. Yes, sir. Next, in order to uh, deliver the vote of thank, I would like to invite engineer Tark Dayabandar to the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am here with great pleasure uh, to deliver the vote of thanks uh, on behalf of the Mechanical Engineers External Committee of IESL. Uh, let me thank Diva, our own Diva, Tinakar Mahalinga to come, coming here and delivering the very valuable insight on uh, Lean and Six Sigma in, in used in manufacturing and service industries. Uh, I think it's he, he uh, shared very valu valuable insights in terms of how the Lean being applied in the context in uh, the three components of uh, Lean, Muda, Mura and Mi, uh, Mira. So how it's, how it's going to use uh, and uh, the eight wastes and how we, why the, the creativity, loss of creativity is very important uh, in the aspect of uh, waste, the mood aspects of it. And then he touched on the SPC, the statistical process control part of it, the special cause variation, the, uh, the common cause variations. And then he, he also touched upon the areas of the, vari uh, the variation in terms of uh, uh, the, the, si the measurement system variance and then the uh, actual process variance elaborating more on the measurement system variance he tapped on uh, he spoke about the repeatability and reproducibility so very valuable insights i think these are the things actually very very much is useful in making uh, factual decisions in our industries uh, i think not many uh, touch on the values of the these uh, tools in Sri Lankan context, not, uh, I have also conducted few trainings on this area. I think it's very interesting. Diva coming here and talk, sharing his view. Uh, sh shall I give? Shall we give him a warm round of applause, please? Uh, at uh, Mechanical Engineering Section of the Committee, we do a lot, um, a lot of this kind of uh, uh, public lectures for the benefit of. Uh, the public to share our, our, our views and discuss the, uh, the, the things of importance. Uh, so for that there's a lot of people uh, in the backstage help us. Uh, especially I would like to thank ISL staff, especially Ms. Ramani, Ms. Uh, uh, Sanduni, um, uh, Mr. Khalan and Mr. Amar who uh, help us with the IT infrastructure. And uh, further friends from IMAKI of course. Uh, for coming here and uh, uh, you know uh, cordially sharing this uh, presentation with us. Uh, last but not least, would show I mean gratitude of the audience uh, for being here. Let us give a round of applause to our all for being here today to share the uh, experience. So thank you very much for being here. Be in touch with us. Uh, we are on Twitter. Uh, we are on. Uh, uh, Facebook, we are on YouTube, we will be sharing these uh, presentations on YouTube as well. So please do share your thoughts with us through those venues. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>